like, reach out, find a friend, grab their pinky, and give a little pinky shake. you have to pick which person is going to be the shell and which person is going to be the wiggly antlers. You go like this. So there are so many different ways that you can do a fist bump. So reach out, find a friend, and give a fist bump. celebrate Black History Month. Two, we celebrate Groundhog Day. That happened uh, sometime this past week. Three, we celebrate Valentine's Day. That's just one week from now. There are so many awesome things that we celebrate during February. Oh, and also, were you guys around for that giant snowstorm last week? Whoa, that was a lot of snow. Well, I guess depending on where you live. Because some places, maybe you got a lot of snow to start, but then lots of rain came. And other places just got lots and lots and lots of snow and they still have snow. And it kind of depends where you live in Massachusetts and how much snow you got. Isn't that so interesting how weather works that way? About how even towns right next to each other can be so different? I think that's pretty cool. God is so creative. And we talked a few weeks ago about how awesome it is that God made all these different seasons and how creative he must be. So anyways, I thought that was pretty cool. All right, well, let's talk through our schedule for the day. We just did our ah, la, 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 leluyas. Next, we're gonna go see Jimmy and listen to him interviewing another person from the church. We'll come back here for our Bible story time We'll do offering and prayer. We'll go see Amanda for a craft. We'll come back here for some music. And then at the very end, I have a question for you guys. Oh, and also a little surprise that I wanted to show you. All right, well, I hope you have a fun time with Jimmy. See you back here in a bit. Bye. Hello there, Children's Church. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. 
Boy, wasn't it great that we got all that snow this week? My mom and I went for a long walk in the snow just to enjoy how beautiful it was. We had to shovel some snow first, which was kind of tiring, but even that was kind of fun. I'm glad that there are people here at the church who do all the shoveling when we get snow here. Like Mr. Steve, who we talked to last week. Oh, and do you remember he told us that baseball joke, which I had actually told you all once before? That was kind of funny. It can be hard to find new jokes about stuff without telling the same ones over and over again. Because of that joke from last week, though, oh, and because the Super Bowl is tonight, I did try to find some new jokes about sports that I can tell you today. Ready? Ahem. What sport is the most popular for insects? Well, it's probably cricket. Get it? Oh, wait, you might not get it. So cricket is a sport which we don't play a lot here in America, but they, they play a lot over in England, like where Pastor Julian was from, who we talked to a while ago. Anyway, it's, it's kind of like baseball. Oh, speaking of baseball, when is a baseball player kind of like a spider? When he catches a fly ball. Get it? Because, you know, a, a spider uses its web to catch flies to eat, and a baseball player might use his glove to catch a fly ball. I don't think he would eat the ball, though. That would be kind of yucky. Yuck. Okay, one more. Why did the football coach go to the bank? To get his quarterback. Get it? Because, you know, there's a kind of coin called a quarter, and sometimes we might go to the bank because we need quarters. But there's also a position in football called the quarterback, like Tom Brady. Boy, I hope he wins tonight. Anyway, aren't those great? I know I had fun telling them. Well, now it's time for us to call someone new from the church. Here goes. It's the Jimmy Interview Show with our very special guest star, Mr. Micah Hearn. Yay! Oh, hang on. Oh, where's the button? Uh, ah. Hi there. My name is Jimmy the Puppet, and I'm calling you from Children's Church. Hey, Jimmy, it's great to see you. I've seen some of your other videos. I love them. Really? Oh, that's great. Well, it's great to see you, too. Uh, w would you mind if I asked you a few questions to share with the kids? Not at all. Thank you. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself to the kids? Sure. My name is Mike Ahern. You can call me Mr. Mike when you see me at church. Thanks, Mr. Mike. All right, our first question. What is the name of your job at the church? I am the church administrator. The church administrator. Cool. As the church administrator, what do you do for the church? Well, I'm responsible for all those things that the ministers don't want to have anything to do with. What? Like, what would that be? Well, I make sure, first of all, that our bills get paid on time. And oh. that includes paying the staff who work here, including the ministers. Oh. So they do care that I do my job. Oh, and then in addition to that, I also make sure that things get fixed, whether it's uh, a a paper copier or whether it's a broken window and I also make sure that everything that gets printed gets printed so the Sunday bulletins for those people that come on Sundays and also uh, the ones that you can see over zoom and over the computer screen Wow that's a lot thank you for doing all of that well that's okay I have lots of good people that work for me doing a lot of it too that's great do you have a favorite thing about working at Park Street? It's doing God's work with people that I love. It's a great team of people to work with. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and do you have any fun facts or, or fun stories about the church that you'd like to share? I think so. I have two I want to tell you, if that's okay. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Sure. Well, first of all, I don't know if you kids know about the Big Bell Project. 
So Ooh. most church steeples historically have had big bells in them. And our church steeple had a big bell in it. But believe it or not, it hasn't worked for a long, long time. It's 200 years old and it needed to be fixed. And remember I said I'm responsible for making sure things get fixed? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So what we did is we removed it from the steeple two years ago. And we shipped it to a bell foundry. And this bell is huge. As a matter of fact, it's at least as big as a small car and it weighs just as much. So wow. it was a big project getting it out of the steeple with a crane. Hey, hey, wait a minute. If, if there's no bell in the steeple, then how come I hear bells coming from the steeple? Well, we have a machine sort of like, like a, a, you know, listening to music on your, on your parent's laptop or, oh. or something like that. But when we get the bell back, you're going to hear our real bell sound. And it actually is bringing some little small new friends with it. Wow. That's, that's really neat. Yeah. I can't wait to hear that. When I say small new friends, I'm talking about smaller bells that ring different tones. Oh, with oh yeah. Big guy. Cool. I, I thought maybe small friends like me, but okay, <laughs> more bells. That's awesome. Oh, what was your other fun fact? Oh, thank you. Well, I and my wife, Joy, were married here in Park Street Church on December 1st, 1990. And Steve McGaff and his wife, Doreen, were married here on the same day. Oh, oh, I remember Mr. Steve telling us that. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, that must have been a really happy day for, for, for everybody. It was a very happy day for everybody and a busy day for the church. Our, yeah, wedding, our, wedding, our wedding was at 11 o'clock in the morning. Ooh, that's early. And Mr. Steve's and his wife Doreen's wedding was at 2 p.m. Cool. Three hours later. So we made sure our wedding didn't run too long and that we, you know, got our guests out of the church and to the reception hall before their guests started to show up. That's really neat. Th thank you for telling us about that. So we always, Mr. Steve and I always remind each other about our wedding anniversary coming up. Oh, that's fun because it's the same day. That's right. Same day, same year. That's a lot of fun. Okay, next up. Do you have a favorite Bible verse that you can tell us? A verse? Yes. If I had to pick a single verse, I think I would pick a verse from Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I memorized that verse when I was four years old. Wow. And I memorized the other verses of that psalm at that same time, and I've never forgotten it. What that verse means is that even when things are hard and tough, and even when you're sad, God is still with you. That's, that's amazing. You know, we've been learning about the Psalms with Miss Christina, and Mr. David Ricks shared some verses from that same Psalm. That's really great. Oh, that's good. Yeah, David is, is a good Bible man. Mm -hmm. And I know Miss Christina is too. Oh, yeah. All right, one more thing. Sometimes here in Children's Church, we like to tell some jokes for the kids. Do you know any jokes that you'd like to tell? Yeah. Well, this is a question. Let me ask you a question. We'll see if we'll, Jim, okay. we'll see if you know the answer. Can Ooh. you name the one person in the Bible that has no parents? Hmm. Uh, oh, how about Adam? Because because he was the, the the first one. He was the first man, but God is called his father in oh. the New Testament, and God created okay. him in His image. Um, yeah. Jesus? Oh, wait, no, we're married. Yeah, same is true for him. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Who, who had no parents then? Joshua, son of Nun. Wait, Joshua, son of Nun? Yeah. Then that means he has no parents? Well, that's the joke. <laughs> oh, I because, well, well, how is it a joke? Well, because his father's name was Nun. Oh, I see. Oh, but that's funny. I, I've never met someone named Nun before. I haven't either. Well, that's a really funny joke. Thank you for sharing it with us, Mr. Mike. And, and thank you for answering all our questions. It was a lot of fun to talk to you. My pleasure. Great to see you and meet you and talk to you, Jimmy. Yeah. Have a great week, Mr. Mike. You too, Jimmy. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Wow, that was a lot of fun. I didn't even know there was such a job as the church administrator, but it sounds like he does a lot. 
It's really cool to hear how so many people work together to make the church what it is. Anyway, we don't want to miss the beginning of our Bible time with Miss Christina, so let's go listen to that. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Hello, friends. Welcome back. I hope you had a good time with Jimmy and Mr. Mike Ahern. Wow, it sounds like Mr. Mike does so many different things at the church. It really sounds like he helps the church to run smoothly and make sure that everything gets done that needs to get done. Oh, and also, one of Mr. Mike's fun facts that he shared about Park Street is about the giant bell that's inside of the steeple. Well, it used to be inside of the steeple, but like what Mr. Mike said is that they actually took the giant bell out of the steeple. They had to use a big crane to take it out and they sent it to a bell foundry, which is a place where bells are made so that it could get fixed. And once it gets back here, it's going to ring loud and clear. Oh, speaking of ringing, I think the bells are gonna ring in about three minutes. So you guys can listen. You might hear them in the background as I'm reading the story or as I'm talking. And so those are the bells that Mr. Mike is talking about. So right now we have different kind of bells that are in the steeple, but pretty soon there's going to be a giant bell back in our steeple that will be ringing. I'm so excited. All right, well, we're going to start our Bible time now. You can see all the bookmarks that I have ready for when I read from the Bible later. So we've been learning about the book of Psalms. Now the book of Psalms is located just about right in the middle of your Bible. And many of the Psalms were written by King David, the same David from David and Goliath. And there are so many different types of Psalms that King David wrote. And today we're actually going to be reading verses from many different books of Psalms. So a verse here, a verse there, a verse here. And today all the Bible verses are going to be about being sad. Have you guys ever been sad before? I've been sad before. So we're going to learn a little bit more about what it means to be sad and what it means for God to comfort us and for us to know that the sadness won't last forever, but that God will bring joy and peace into our hearts. So our book today is called Sometimes I Have to Cry. So it looks like this boy is sad about something. I can see he's crying. So maybe we'll find out what he's sad about. There are the bells. Sometimes I have to cry. You know what, God? Sometimes I get sad and grouchy. Like when I'm tired of my toys and there's no one to play with and I have nothing to do. And that's when I whine and I cry a little. But that's not when I feel the worst. You know what the worst feeling is, God? It's when I feel so deep down sad that I can't stop crying. Yesterday, my dog died and now my crying just won't stop. It's really hard to lose something you love, isn't it? I remember when I was little, I had this little horse that I slept with 
and I brought it with me everywhere I went. And one time we went to this hotel and I forgot my horse at the hotel and we couldn't find it afterwards. And I cried and cried and cried because I missed my little horse so much and I felt like the crying would never stop. Sometimes when I think I'm done crying, it starts all over again. Like just now when I opened the refrigerator and I saw the bone that my neighbor gave me all wrapped up in foil for my dog, but now I can't give it to him. That is sad, isn't it? You know, God, with all the people in the world, you must hear a lot of crying, but you don't turn away or block up your ears. You're a good listener, God, and you understand. It's true, God really does listen to us when we're sad and he does understand. My feelings are spread out in front of you, the way we spread out papers at school. My sadness is not hidden from you, God. Did you guys know that God knows everything about us? He knows everything about us, like what we look like and the kinds of foods we like, but he also knows everything about us, like even the sad things that are inside of our heart, God knows about those things and he cares about them too. You know what, God? Sometimes when I'm sad, I close my eyes and pretend I'm a little baby again. And then I imagine that you, God, are a strong and gentle father holding me close to you. That's a really nice picture, isn't it? Thinking about God holding you close when you're sad. There, there, I seem to hear you say, be still now and just remember that I am your God. You let me know that it's all right to cry and you help me know that I won't always be crying. Looks like he's feeling a little bit better, huh? Being sad is like a long, dark night. And being happy again is like the morning. Oh God, you are my comforter, my stick beside me friend. How wonderful you are. Isn't it so great to know that God is always with us, even when we're sad and when we feel like we have to cry? 
and even sometimes when the sadness is so so big it feels like we'll never stop crying but God tells us that someday there's going to be no more crying no more tears and it's going to be wonderful. Actually, there's a place in the Bible at the very, very end of the Bible where it talks about how in heaven, God will wipe away every single tear from our eyes and we won't be sad anymore. But the good thing is for now, we know that God is always with us even when we're sad. And let me read this one part again. It says, God, you let me know that it's all right to cry. It's all right to be sad. And you help me know that I won't always be crying. Because we know that God helps to heal our bodies, but God also helps to heal our hearts. And so that means when we're sad, God can comfort our hearts to help us be happy again. So let me read a few Bible verses for you. And uh, like I said, this is kind of going to be jumping around from different chapters. So that's why I have so many bookmarks here. <laughs> you ready for it? I'm going to be turning a lot of pages. Lord, listen to my words understand what i am thinking listen to my cry for help my king and my god i pray to you lord every morning you hear my voice every morning i tell you what i need the lord has heard my crying the lord has heard my cry for help Lord, you know everything I want. My cries are not hidden from you. God says, be still, be quiet, and know that I am God. I will be supreme over all the nations. I will be supreme in the earth. Crying may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Comfort me with your love. God is always with us when we're happy and when we're sad. And God's love is always with us too. God never leaves us and he never stops loving us. Sometimes it might be hard to remember that God always loves us, especially when something really hard happens, like losing something that we love and we're really sad. But we know that no matter what, even if we're going through something really hard, God still loves us and he will never leave us. And that is something really important for us to remember. All right, well, I need to put away my books to get ready for our offering time. So give me a second to do that and I'll be right back. All right, so we're all ready to start our offering time. If you would like to go grab a basket of your very own, you can. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. It could be a wicker basket, but it could also be a plastic bowl from your kitchen or a tub or the lid to a plastic tub. You can get creative with it. So I'm going to put on a music video for you to listen to and to watch and also give you some time to find your very own offering basket if you would like. So when the song's over and when you get back, we'll start our offering time.
All right, so we're all ready to get started. If you got your own basket, what you can do is you can take your hand and gently touch the bottom of the basket. Some friends like to touch their heart first and then touch the bottom of the basket. And when you do that, you're telling Jesus, Jesus, I want to give you my heart today which is a very special way of saying that you want to give Jesus the love that's inside of your heart, that you're telling Jesus that you love him. And that is a very special thing that you can do. Also, if you have brothers or sisters with you or some grown-ups, what you can do is you can take your basket and pass it back and forth and you each can take turns putting your hand in the basket as you pass it back and forth. So while you all are doing that with your basket and placing your hand in the bottom, I'm going to be singing the song Sanctuary and if you also know it, you can join in and sing along with me. So now we're going to spend a little bit of time praying and like in the past few weeks, the past previous weeks that we've been working on the book of Psalms during Bible time, I've been telling you guys about how you can use Bible verses while you're praying. You can take a Bible verse and you can turn it back into a prayer to God. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I have all of my bookmarks still here from Bible time. So I'm going to be flipping back and forth and using some of the Bible verses that I read to you today during our prayer. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in your hair. Get ready for prayer. Dear God, today we've been learning about how sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we need to cry. But we've also been learning about how you listen to us when we're sad and that you understand and that you give comfort to our hearts. And so we just wanted to say that we are thankful that you do listen to us, that you're always listening and that we can talk to you anytime and anywhere when we're happy and when we're sad. God, we thank you that you hear our cries for help and that you hear all of our crying and that you care about us and you care when we are sad. God, we thank you that our tears and our crying is not hidden from you. And all of the sad things inside of our heart is not hidden from you. But you know everything about us, even those things that are deep down in our hearts that make us sad. 
and you love us and you care about us. Thank you, God, that we can be quiet, that we can be still, and remember that you are God. And that seems like kind of a simple thing to say, right? That, of course, God is God. But what that really means is we're saying we just need to remember that God can take care of everything. That the very person we are talking to right now, you, God, that you control the whole universe and there's nothing that is too hard for you to do, that you can do anything. And God, we thank you so much that you can do anything, but more importantly, that you love us. You love us so, so, so much, and we can trust you. God, thank you that our crying and our sadness will not last forever. We know that eventually we'll feel better again and that we will feel joyful. Joyful because you give us your joy. And we also know that you comfort us with your love. So thank you, God, so much that you are always with us. You never leave us. Even when something really hard happens and even when we're really sad, we can still trust in you because we know that you love us so, so, so much that you're always with us and that you comfort our hearts when we are sad. God, this week, if there's anything sad that happens, please help us to remember that we can talk to you anytime and anywhere and that we can talk to you about our sad feelings and that you listen and that you understand and that you care about us and you love us. So thank you, God, so much that all of those things are true and thank you that we can trust you no matter what. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, friends, well, thank you so much for joining me for offering and for prayer. We're going to head on over to Amanda now up in the craft room and see what craft she has for us today. I'll see you back here for music time in a little bit. Bye.
So don't worry if you can't print this out. You can draw it yourself and it's going to be great. All right, so I'm gonna color this and then I'll be right back. So now that I've colored all the different parts, I colored the clock and I colored all the numbers on the clock and I even colored the two different pieces for the hour hand and the minute hand. I need to cut them out. So I'm gonna cut out these three different pieces and I'll be back to show you in just a second. Great. So you can see that I cut out the three different pieces. The clock, the hour hand, and the minute hand. And you can probably also see that there's tiny little holes on each of these pieces. So like see there's a tiny hole there, and a tiny hole there, and another tiny hole right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this piece right here. It's called a brad, and it has these two little arms that are down at the bottom here. So what you have to do is you have to push it through the hole and then open it on the back. And then that's going to let us spin the clock hand all the way around to whatever time we want to make it. So I'm going to line up all of these three circles right on top of each other. I'm going to push my brad through, and then I'll be right back to show you what it looks like. Perfect. So I guess the last thing to do is to decorate it with stickers. I'm probably going to put some heart stickers around it because I want to remember that not only is God always with me, but that God always loves me. And that's a great thing to remember. So I think I'm going to put some heart stickers around it. And then it'll be all done. Welcome back. I hope you had a good time with Amanda doing her craft. I thought that was so cool how she took that clock that had the daytime and the nighttime and how it said God is always with me and how that made Amanda remember that from our Bible lesson today that being sad is like a long dark night but being happy again is like when it turns into morning. And I thought that was really cool how she remembered that and used that during our craft time. So we're going to be doing a song called God is so good. And I know how to sing this song, but I'm kind of just learning how to play it on guitar. So I have my chords written down on this piece of paper to help me while I play. So I might be looking here a lot, but that's because it's helping me to play all of my guitar chords. And for those of you who don't know this song yet, it's a really easy song to pick up on. Thank you. 
Good job, guys. All right, so we're going to watch a couple more music videos now from our Kids Week music videos, and I hope you guys enjoy them. And when we get back, I have a couple of questions for you and also a little special surprise to show you too. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.
Welcome back. I hope you had a good time watching those music videos. And uh, what's that did you say? Why am I holding a dead plant? <laughs> well, that's a very good question. So this is actually a flower plant that someone gave me as a present. And now all of the flowers are starting to wilt and starting to die. But there was something that I noticed when I looked at this plant. So if any of you guys were watching Children's Church last summer when I was, well, more like the beginning of last fall, when I was trying to grow watermelon plants and cantaloupe plants, and I was telling you guys that, that if the flower gets pollinated, and that means that if all of this, kind of yellowy, I don't know if you guys can see it there on the camera, but there's lots of like yellowy powdery stuff here. If that pollen gets inside of the flower, then it can start growing the fruit of the plant. And that um, we would notice kind of a, a little round ball start to grow and that would be the beginning of the watermelon. So I was about to throw this plant away because it's all done being nice and pretty and smelling good. It, doesn't really smell good anymore. <laughs> but just before I was about to throw it away, I noticed something. Do you guys notice something at the very bottom of the flowers? There's like these little balls that are starting to grow there. So I was kind of wondering, what if this flower plant is kind of like the watermelon plant and maybe these flowers got pollinated and that they're starting to grow new baby plants there. And I'm not sure, but I just wanted to show you guys because I think I'm going to look it up this week and see if that's what's really happening there because those balls were not there before. They just kind of started growing. So I'm thinking that maybe the flower got pollinated and maybe these are new flower plants that I'll be able to plant later and watch them grow. So I'm gonna do some research about that this week and then I can give you an update next week. And then also I have a question for you guys. So my question for you this week is what is your favorite smell? Because like I said, this thing is kind of stinky. This isn't really a good smell anymore. But when the flowers were all fresh and beautiful, they smelled so good. So I'm wondering what your favorite smell is. Maybe your favorite smell is a flower. Maybe your favorite smell is your favorite candy. Or maybe your favorite smell is waking up in the morning and smelling cinnamon rolls fresh out of the oven. Or maybe your favorite smell is a special blanket that you have. So whatever your favorite smell is, you can send in your response to me. You can have a grown up text me on my phone or send it to my email and I will get back to you a response of what my favorite smell is. All right, well, I hope you guys had a great time today in Children's Church. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope you have a great week. See you next time. Bye.